Hey everyone, and welcome to The Year Was, the podcast all about today that gives you just enough information to effectively be that guy at the party, causing all your friends to question, hey, who invited you? Like, seriously, why are you here? I'm your host, Michael Montalvo, and for the next few minutes, we will swim through the river of time to try and find out what makes it a truly unique. In this episode, we examine the events that occurred... May 19th. The room is dark, except for the lights that illuminate the stage. Shining spotlights, highlighting stars from all corners of the Hollywood sphere. Singers sing, actors talk, the audience watches as they all gather to honor and celebrate one man. On the stage there is performance. Behind the curtain, in the back halls and dressing rooms, there is life. Marie Irvine stands in front of a woman that would soon captivate an entire room. The woman has spent hours rehearsing, making sure every note, every word, every moment that she is to spend on stage is going to be perfect. I knew you would come, says the woman as she looks at the earrings that Irvine is holding, the ones the woman had forgotten at home. On stage, a man, Peter Lawford, stands performing for the crowd, not singing, but performing nonetheless. He takes a moment to announce the next guest, the woman, an act he has been doing all night, with the joke being that she is always late. He gets a laugh, and the woman makes her way on stage. Mr. President, Lawford begins, the late Marilyn Monroe. Lawford then takes her coat, revealing Monroe's flesh-colored dress covered in rhinestones that is so closely hugging her body she had to be sewn into it earlier in the day. It suggests a bit of nudity to the audience, and to all who will see the photos from the event, as the audience continues to cheer as Monroe lifts her hands to shield her eyes from the lights hitting her on stage and lets out a breath, signaling she is ready to begin. The year was 1962, and on this day, May 19th, Marilyn Monroe sings Happy Birthday, Mr. President, to John F. Kennedy. She then sings a song about his accomplishments as president and wishes him a happy birthday, encouraging the rest of the audience to do the same as a giant cake is brought out. The president would later take to the stage and address the crowd, saying, I can now retire from politics after having had Happy Birthday sung to me in such a sweet and wholesome manner. Dorothy Kilgallen would remark of the performance that the song Monroe sang was like making love to the president in front of 40 million Americans. Happy Birthday, Mr. President was performed at a fundraiser and celebration for Kennedy's 45th birthday and has become one of the defining moments in pop culture history, but Most of the articles and news reports from that day are more about her dress than the event or her performance. It was made of sheer fabric with over 2,500 rhinestones and sold for $4.8 million in 2016 to Ripley's Believe It or Not to be put on display. Now that I've mentioned the dress, let's talk about the event. Leading up to it, Monroe was working on the film Something's Gotta Give for 20th Century Fox. It was during filming that she called up Marie Irvine and told her of the event and her desire to have Irvine do her makeup. She left production and flew to New York in order to make the Madison Square Garden show. Irvine arrived to do her makeup but received no answer at the door and waited an hour before Monroe was up to answer, having still been asleep because of her flight. She then went back to sleep, waking at noon so that she could prepare for the evening. As previously mentioned, she had been practicing her songs for some time, trying to perfect them for her eventual performance to the president. Irvine spent half the day putting on makeup for Monroe in between practice and phone calls with 20th Century Fox, who were threatening to suspend her from the movie for leaving for New York. Ultimately, 20th Century was not happy with her decision and would eventually fire her from the film but that was still in the future. There had been rumors of an affair between her and Kennedy for three months by this point, having been introduced by Peter Lawford 
and while Monroe hoped she would be able to spend time with him at the event, it was uncertain it would ever happen. She took a break from practicing to have her hair done and then put on the dress that would wow the world. Then she left for the event, forgetting her earrings, before Irvine rushed them to her, where she would soon after perform. Throughout the alleged affair, Monroe and Kennedy were careful never to be photographed together, but White House photographer Cecil Stoughton still managed to snag one. The only known existing photo of the pair was taken later that night at an after-party at Arthur Crim's home. The Happy Birthday song would be the most famous interaction between Kennedy and Monroe, and also their last, because she would be found dead only three months later, August 4th, 1962. The death of Marilyn Monroe deserves an episode all on its own, due to the conspiracies that have arisen from it. This has been one of those pop culture moments that has kind of defined pop culture, and I remember seeing it spoofed in movies and TV, cartoons, just about anything, really. It seems that all anyone really remembers Marilyn Monroe for is being a sex symbol and a difficult person to work with. Just look at what Tony Curtis has to say. But I think that does a disservice to her because she was so much more than just that. She came from a troubled past and rose to be one of the biggest stars of all time. And by all accounts, she was incredibly kind and ambitious. She even founded her own production company in 1954. She overcame personal troubles and became one of the most recognizable figures in the world. I think that's not something to look at lightly. That's going to do it for us today. If you like this podcast and want to hear more, give us a rate and a review. That helps me out and helps you this in a direction that is hopefully good for all. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find the Year Was audio version on your podcast app of choice. You can find me on social media and at YouTube at the Apple Cider Club. And as always, I want to thank the Tim Kreitz Band for our musical theme. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.